Now that it's September, I'm really excited to start decorating for fall. So today I have a bunch of ideas for you to add a pop of color to your fall decorations. Hey everyone, thanks for coming to hang out with me again today. If you're new here, my name's Jess. I'm really excited to get crafting. I hope you are too. Let's get started. Pumpkins are always my first choice when it comes to decorating for fall. So for these pumpkins, I'm going to use two pieces of scrap wood, some of these little twig pieces from the Dollar Tree, some scrap leaves. I also have a few of these paper doilies, some ribbon, and a pack of these really cute pumpkin stickers that I found at the Dollar Tree. To get started, I'm giving both of my wood pieces two coats of orange chalk paint. This is the Pumpkin Color by Waverly. Now these scrap wood pieces that I have came in some packaging when we bought a new TV. They were kind of brace pieces. Um, so, you know, obviously not everybody's going to have this type of scrap wood, but anything that you have laying around will work. Or if you don't have any scrap wood, they do sell wood squares and wood rectangle shapes at the Dollar Tree that you could use instead. After my orange paint had dried, I took out those paper doilies and I'm placing them in different areas on each of the pumpkins. So you can see here, I laid one doily on the bottom right hand corner of the pumpkin. I'm just holding it in place with my finger and I'm using a chalk brush to paint white chalk paint over the top of the doily. I'm going in an up and down motion rather than side to side so that the paint will just go right on top of that doily and I don't run the risk of getting any paint underneath it. I did make sure that I painted past the edge of the doily also so that you could see a nice outline from the doily. Now this is where I said it really doesn't matter what kind of scrap wood you could you want to use. You could use any size here or any shape and depending on how big of a pumpkin you want you would just want to buy a bigger doily to fit over at the top of the pumpkin. So for the second one here you can see I, sh I shifted the doily over and I did it more in the center on the top on the bottom of the pumpkin and this is where you can get creative. You can place these doilies anywhere you want and the pattern on them is so pretty it makes a really pretty pattern on your pumpkins too. Now that the white paint had dried from the stencil that we used the doily for. I took out those Dollar Tree pumpkin stick stickers. I think these are so cute. I can't always find the holiday stickers at my Dollar Tree, so I was really excited when I was able to find these ones. They have a little bit of a 3D look to them because they are layered stickers. So I picked two out that I thought would look really cute on my pumpkins, and I put one on each of my pumpkins. I do want my pumpkins to stand up, so I took two of these tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and I'm just hot gluing one to each of the back sides of the pumpkin so that they would have a little brace in the back so they could stand on their own. I'm using two of these little twig pieces that I got in a bag from the Dollar Tree to act as the stems on my pumpkins. I was able to find two that were about the same width as my wood blocks so I just added a little hot glue to the top and I put my twigs in place. As a final touch for my pumpkins, I had some of these scrap leaves in my stash. So I cut the big part of the stem off of the leaf and I also tied bows out of some gray and white striped ribbon that I had. I just hot glued a leaf at the top of the pumpkin and put the bow on top of it. There's a lot of different ways you could customize this to fit your taste. I think those wired berry gar garlands that you can get at the Dollar Tree would look really cute at the top of these pumpkins. Or you could even make a big old bow or even add some flowers, whatever you want to do and whatever fits your style will work for these. big pack of mixed ribbons that are all in fall colors at Michael's and I knew I wanted to create some ribbon tassels for a garland. In addition to those ribbons I'm going to use some wood beads from the Dollar Tree and also these wooden leaves from the Dollar Tree and some silk leaves that I'm not sure where I got and I have some white macrame cord that I got from Amazon. To get started on the ribbon tassels I gathered up five or six ribbons out of that bundle that I thought looked nice together. I just folded them in half because they were a really great length to make a long tassel. I found the center and I took a piece of jute cord and I tied it right around the center and I tied it in a double knot so that it would stay in place. Once I had the center tied then I took a second piece of jute cord and about an inch to an inch and a half down from this where I tied it at the top I just tied it around again so that it would bundle all of the ribbons together. 
I picked out a wider piece of ribbon from that bundle. This is in a navy blue color that I think is really pretty. And where I had tied that jute around the top to bundle everything together, I'm just running a band of this ribbon around that to give it a nice finished look. Now, depending on how long you want your garland to be, you can make as many tassels as you need to get the length that you want. For mine, I only needed about four or five because I didn't have a very wide space to put this on. And because I did fold those ribbons in half, I did have to go back through and make sure that I cut all of those folded ends so that there weren't any loops at the bottom. They were all just free flowing cut ribbons. You could just make a garland out of ribbon tassels and I think that would look really pretty, but I decided to add a second element to my garland. So I'm using these wooden leaf ornaments that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I'm using some Distress ink here and I do have an ink sponge to run the ink around the outside edges of all of the leaves and the ink color that I'm using this is a Tim Holtz distress ink and this is called gathered twigs I thought it looked really pretty with the wood grain here and you can see I only put the distress ink around the edges of the leaves I left the centers a little bit lighter then I took one of the silk leaves and I just ran a bead of hot glue down the center of the silk leaf where there was already a fold in the material and then I glued it on top of the other leaf that way it was wasn't glued flat to the wooden leaf it still had the edges open so that it gave it a little bit more dimension than if you would just glue it flat to the leaf so you can see here again I'm just running a thin bead along that center fold in the material and I'm just pressing that down right on the leaf so the edges still flap I knew in the beginning I showed you that I was going to use some wood beads here and you still could. My original plan was to string a few wood beads at the top of the leaf before I tied it on. But because of the where the hole in the leaf is, it goes at the top of the leaf and there's a point there. The bead didn't really lay right, so I decided to just skip that step. So instead, I just kept it simple. I used some baker's twine to tie on my leaves and the jute rope that was already at the top of the tassels, I just used that to tie my tassels on. I didn't tie anything too tight so that I could slide it around if I needed to re-space anything. I love paper crafting, so I'm always looking for a way to incorporate some paper crafts in my videos, but I wanted to make a pumpkin that didn't require any kind of special tools. In addition to some scrapbook paper, I'm going to use some of the wired berry garland and some twigs and leaves, whatever you want to use to decorate your pumpkin. This pumpkin was inspired by the mason jar ring pumpkins that you can find all over Pinterest and Instagram. First, I started by taking my 12 by 12 paper and I cut it down to one inch strips. So all of my strips measured one inch by 12 inch. Now you don't have to use a paper trimmer here. You could just use a ruler and a pair of scissors if that's what you have. But if you have a paper trimmer, it does make it a lot easier. Once I had all of my strips cut, then I just looped them over until they formed a ring. I'm using a little bit of paper craft glue. This is the art glitter glue. This is my favorite when I'm doing paper crafts. I glued about a half an inch down from one end of the ring and then I joined it with the other one. So this is kind of reminiscent of, I don't know if you did this when you were a kid, but when I was a kid in elementary school, we made paper chains all the time for decorations. And this is basically the same thing. You're just taking strips of paper and you're adding a little bit of glue to one end and forming rings. But instead of chaining it together, how we did with the paper chains, we're keeping all of the rings separate for now and you can see here the paper that I'm using is double-sided so you'll be able to see a little bit of pattern from the outside and the inside which I think is really cute but this is also a great place if you only have single-sided uh, scrapbook paper this would work too because even if the center is just white it would still look really pretty once all of my rings were formed, then I just took a longer length of jute rope and I strung all of the rings onto my jute cord and I tied the two ends together to form a circle. Once I had the jute work rope tied then I just started fidgeting with the rope a bit until I had all of the rings spaced out how I like them. 
After I played around with the rings enough till I liked the shape of my pumpkin, then I used my hot glue and I ran hot glue all over the top of the pumpkin to hold the rings pretty much in place. Now this wasn't secure enough for me, so I did cut another circle out of some more scrapbook paper that would fit on the bottom of the pumpkin. I used some hot glue and I just laid that on top and I made sure that all of the rings were touching that circle so that they would stay in place. After my hot glue had a chance to set, then I started decorating my pumpkin. I started by gluing a few of the fall leaves that I had on hand around the sides. And then for the stem, I'm using these twigs um, again, but they weren't quite long enough. They kind of sunk down into the pumpkin too far. So I just hot glued two of them together so that they could stand up through the top. And I also took this berry garland that you can find at the Dollar Tree. It is wired. So I cut a length of it and I wrapped it around one of the tools in my craft room so that it formed a corkscrew. And then I just tucked those in so they kind of sprouted out through the top of the pumpkin. I'm not gonna lie, when I was making these paper rings for this pumpkin, I really wanted to make one of those paper chains again. <laughs> I just think they would look so cute. When I was a kid, we always just made them out of plain construction paper, but I think it would look really cute as a garland, especially with how the scrapbook paper is now. The patterns are so pretty and detailed. I just think they would make a really good paper chain. <laughs> do you think I'm crazy? Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Should I make a paper chain garland or not? Dollar Tree always has great blank wood pieces for every holiday. I grabbed one of their wooden pumpkins. I also grabbed a pack of their window clings because I really liked this Hello Autumn quote that's in the center of this one. And I am using some of the larger craft sticks from Walmart. I just held up one of the regular craft sticks so you could see how much bigger it was. I started by picking out three paint colors that I thought would match the colors of the window cling. Here I'm using hazelnut, moss and just plain white chalk paint. I'm painting a whole bunch of craft sticks with those three colors. I wasn't really sure how many craft sticks I would need. I kind of laid them out first to give myself an estimate of how many I thought I would need and I figured I would need about 21 and that actually worked out pretty well for me. So I just painted seven of each color. After my paint was dry, I needed to cut down my craft sticks. So I got out my guillotine style paper trimmer which is my favorite way to cut my craft sticks first i started by cutting off the rounded edges and then i just cut each of the craft sticks in half which was about three and a quarter to three and a half inches the length really didn't matter here but i just went through and i did that with all 21 of my craft sticks I wanted to brick lay these sticks all over the surface of my pumpkin. So to get started, I'm just starting at the bottom left side of my pumpkin here and I picked my green stick first because that was the first one in my piles. And I'm adding hot glue really close to the edge of the pumpkin. So you can see I did lay my silicone mat down because I knew I was gonna have a lot of glue oozing out through the bottom and I wanted to protect my work surface. So I laid the hot glue as close as I could to the edge of the pumpkin and then I added hot glue to the back side of the craft sticks as well. And I just alternated colors throughout the bottom row. Now the reason I wanted to get glue as close as I could to the edge of the pumpkin is because I am going to go through with scissors to trim off the excess craft stick. So if there was glue right to the edge of that pumpkin, it gave me a better chance of getting a cleaner cut with my scissors because craft sticks kind of have a tendency to fray and come apart when you try to cut them with scissors. And because I was going to be cutting on curves and different angles, I wanted to give myself the best chance to have a nice clean cut with just my scissors. So you can see here on the bottom, it went pretty well with my scissors. The bottom looks pretty good. I'm gonna clean it up later with a sanding block. And I just continued that the whole way up the pumpkin. I made sure that when I started a new row that the seams of the craft sticks didn't line up. I wanted to make sure that there was a seam in the center of the previous craft stick, just like a bricklay pattern would go. And I did just continue alternating the colors as I went through the different rows 
It didn't really matter to me if I had some of the same color stacked on top of each other. I just wanted a nice mix match of color all through the pumpkins. And when I got to the sides of the pumpkin, I made sure I did the same thing, that there was hot glue right up to the edge of the side of the pumpkin and on the back of the craft stick so that when I cut it with my scissors, I had a better even cut. And I did go up the whole height of the pumpkin but I did not cover the stem because I was going to cover that with something different. Now that I have all of my sticks glued down and trimmed off I did go back through with my sanding block and anywhere the edges were a bit rough or anywhere that the the sticks kind of splintered I did go through with the sanding block and I smoothed that out as best as I could. Now because the sticks are wood because the pumpkins are wood it sanded off pretty smooth I was happy with how the edges looked and the sanding block did take care of any of the extra hot glue that was sticking out of the sides as well and where I had those little curves on the bottom I was able to fit the corner of the sanding block in there just to smooth that out and to define those curves a bit more. There's a lot of different options when it comes to covering the stem. I decided just to add some hot glue and wrap the whole stem in some jute cord, but you could just paint it. I mean, if you're feeling really ambitious, you could even run those craft sticks up through the stem and try to cut that out, but I wasn't about to go on that journey. So I just used some jute cord, covered mine up. I had to add hot glue as I went, especially when I got to the more curvier port parts of the stem, but it all curved up pretty well, and I was happy with how the jute cord looked with the colors that I had picked for the craft sticks. After I had the whole stem covered in the jute cord, I used the same jute cord and I took two lengths of it to create a thicker bow and I just hot glued that to the base of the stem. When I bought this set of window clings, I thought that they would have a white background. I wasn't expecting the clings to have a clear background. And when I laid it on my pumpkin, it kind of got lost. You know, with all the colors there, they matched up so well that you really couldn't see what was going on. So I took a piece of white cardstock. I just added a little Mod Podge to the back of my window cling and I laid it over the white cardstock so that I could cut it out later and it would have a white background and it would stand out on the pumpkin a bit more. And since I now have a cardstock backer for my window clean, I used my art glitter glue and I just applied glue all over the back of it and put it on the front of the pumpkin. You could also pop this up here too if you wanted to add some craft sticks on the back so that it would lift up a little bit, but I thought with the white background I would just glue it flat down on my pumpkin. I really love the wreaths that are just made out of a single hoop. So I was really excited when the Dollar Tree started carrying these brass wreath rings. I'm going to use the largest one in the pack. I also have a ton of different fall flowers and I have some buffalo check ribbon. This actually came from the Dollar Tree and I have two rolls, but they've both been used before. So I only had a few pieces or a few lengths out of both of them, but I was able to make a bow. I started by looping one of the ribbons over on itself and I laid it up against the wreath so that I could compare the width to make sure that I had it wide enough and then I went into the second roll and I just started looping it over again until I had about three loops on each side and I just secured the center with a zip tie. To get started on decorating my wreath, I grabbed two bouquets from the Dollar Tree that had a lot of different elements on them. These ones had some fruit, they had some eucalyptus type leaves, they had some fall leaves, and I attached one to each side of the bottom of the wreath using a zip tie. And then from there, I was able to build up towards the center where I was going to place the bow. I just started hot gluing and laying things on top of those two things that I had already started with. And because I had spaced them out evenly, I was able to work back towards the center where I was going to place the bow and I knew everything would be symmetrical from side to side. So this is where you can get creative. You can add in any kind of flowers. You can tuck in pine cones, different fall leaves, whatever suits your style. You can just start building it up on on the base of this wreath. 
Once I had a few things laid down on the ring, then I went ahead and grabbed another zip tie and attached the bow to the bottom center of the ring first. And then I was able to go back through and fill in the gap between the edges of the bow and the florals that I had already laid down. That just kind of made more sense to me than trying to fill the whole bottom in with florals first and then attaching the bow on later. I wanted to make sure I had enough room for that bow, but I didn't want there to be a gap between the bow and the flowers. At the top of my wreath, I grabbed a piece of cording and I tied it in a slip knot around the top. I hot glued the two ends together because I wanted to fish it through some wooden beads. This cord was kind of thick and the holes in my beads were not very big. So I did struggle a bit with this, but in the end I did make it work. I had to use a pick tool and kind of dig those holes out a little bit. And I also had to use that same pick tool to help fish the cord through there. So I would just say if you're going to create a hanger like this make sure your cord fits through your beads first but I was committed th at this point and I wanted to make it work and it did in the end and I think it created a really cute hanger for my wreath. Thanks for coming to hang out with me again today. Let me know in the comments if you're excited for fall and if you've started decorating already. All right, everyone, I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you in the next one.